Okay, everybody, welcome back to our next um, part in getting this resume uh, worked on, or at least getting our sketches pulled together digitally. <clears throat> um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a little review. Uh, we did create a resume in Microsoft Word using a template. So here's an example of that resume. We uh, stripped out all the formatting and saved it as a TXT document. So here is that document close that and we are ready to work in InDesign to create our um, digital sketches. Um, now when you open InDesign you'll have the create new document uh, window come up. If you don't have that window go to file new and choose document. <coughs> now this resume um, needs to be um, eight and a half by eleven or some form of eight and a half by eleven it's uh, it, it kind of drives the human resources departments a little nuts if our resume is the wrong or not standard size. So eight and a half by eleven inches also is the equivalent to letter or fifty one pica by sixty six picas. We don't really need facing pages on because this is not a book, and we might want to play around with some columns. Uh, we can always change this later if it's not going to suit our needs. But I'm going to start out with three columns. And the margins are set at three picas or one half an inch. You do want some margins on there. Uh, you can increase these. I wouldn't go much smaller. Your gutter is the space between the columns. So we're going to have three columns with a half an inch uh, around the entire page um, to, be before it gets to the cut edge of the page. Cut edge of the page. And this is the space between the columns. And I'm going to hit OK. Here we go. Now, um, what we do, uh, you might want to create a few pages, but I'm going to start with the first page. One of the first things I'll do is I'll place uh, the graphic that I'll be using. Um, I'll probably put it in its own layer, so I'm clicking on Layers. This is the Layers panel. If that panel is not over here on your left-hand side, any panel, some people call them palettes, but any panel that's missing can be found under Window. And if I click off of Layers, it will hide it. If I click on Layers, it will show it. Now you can rename a layer by double-clicking on it. And I'm going to call this um, Inspiration Image, or Inspiration Crop, because these are those crops we're going to place. Now, to place an image into InDesign, you do not copy and paste from another document. So if you're in Photoshop or Illustrator or anything, do do not, do not copy and paste. That is not the way we do it in the industry, and I want you guys to be employable. Uh, you don't want to get in trouble. We'll instead go to File and Place, and the keyboard shortcut is Command-D. We'll use this a lot to place images and text. So I now need to find my um, my um, file, and it's on my Macintosh hard drive. It's in my Ivy Tech stuff. It's in my uh, Spring Classes folder, Typography, Project 4, and I should have some working files in here. Now, you really do need to manage your files in a way where you can uh, access them quickly. You don't want to, uh, when you're working for somebody, they don't have the time for you to take five or ten minutes just to find a file. So always organize your files so you can find them, you know exactly where they're at. Na don't name them things like untitled folder or untitled file. Now this is the TXT document for the Jane Doe resume, for the copy that I'm using. And it doesn't have a .txt after it. If you're on a PC, it might. But this icon here is the giveaway. The other ones are Word documents. So I click on that and I hit Open. Now what I have here is what's called a loaded cursor. Now um, we don't, we're not sure how how we're going to work in columns yet. So what I might do is I might click and drag. I'm clicking and holding down the mouse, and I'm dragging a text box. And what it's doing is it imports that text. I'm going to zoom in using the zoom tool. Now the zoom tool, if I hit Z, I can also get to that zoom tool. So I don't have to even mouse over. I hit Z and you can see that it changed to the zoom tool. 
Now, I like to click and drag over areas I'm working on instead of doing this. This takes forever and it's not accurate. Now I do hit Command-0 on a PC, that would be Control-0, not O for open, but the number 0, and that will zoom back out. Okay, so I drag in a, a, a marquee around what I want to keep and I uh, can zoom in. Now I did accidentally put that on the wrong layer because I was going to put my image in the back. So I'm going to teach you a little bit about layers. I'm going to create a new layer to put this text on. So in the layers panel, here is the new layer, create new layer button. And it'll automatically call it layer 2. Now I like to rename them. So I double click on it and I call it text. Hit OK. Now, just because I created that layer doesn't mean that this text is on that layer. If you look in the Layers panel, you can see that the text layer has a color um, that marks that as it's red, basically. And the first layer I created, or that was already there, was blue. Now, you'll see that the bounding box on the text is blue. This means it's on this layer that is blue. To move this text to a layer, to another layer, you can click on, well first you have to select the item with the um, selection tool, looks like a black arrow. It will automatically indicate which layer that this item is on by coloring this box. And what you can do is you can drag this and move that box to another layer and now the text is on the layer that I have called text. Now I can click off and on this uh, eyeball, this toggles to make it visible or invisible. So you can see that that text is on its own layer. I can also lock layers if I don't want to move anything. I'm clicking and dragging, nothing's happening. So I'm going to unlock that layer so I can work with it. So that's how you place text. I'm going to turn that layer off for just a moment. Now I'm going to go to the inspiration crop or image layer and it is unlocked and it's ready to go. I want to make sure I've clicked on the layer first before I do anything. Uh, oftentimes when you're working on the layers, we're on the wrong layer and we accidentally place things in the wrong position or in the wrong layer. But I want to select the layer first and I'm going to go to File and I'm going to Place. And I'm going to place one of these cropped layouts that I created probably a, 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 a vertical one because I'm doing working on a vertical layout. I have a horizontal one as well. So I'm going to click on my inspiration layout number two. I'm going to hit open. And you can see again I have what is called a loaded cursor. Now if I click anywhere what it's going to do is it's going to just plop that image right in there. You can also click and drag and it will do the same thing. Now the nice thing about clicking and dragging is it automatically increases the size of that image to fit um, whatever your box is that you drew. Okay, now it may actually be a little bit bigger than 100% of its size. This was, I'm grabbing the uh, direct selection tool, I'm clicking on it, you can click off and then on the image, and this, is, uh, this has increased the size of it 128%, which is not a big deal because I'm going to throw this image away anyway. Um, but if you're doing images, if you're creating images for your layouts, you do not want to enlarge them much past 105%. They'll start to pixelate. Now once you get this in position, um, you can, I, I might lighten this up. Um, so I can go to effects, which is over here in this uh, panel. It says FX, effects, and I can lighten this up quite a bit. So that way I don't have, you know, when I'm working I can actually see stuff. Okay, I'm going to go back to layers and I'm going to lock that layer. The reason why I'm locking the layer is I don't want to move this image. Okay, so we have now a layer with text and a layer with an image. Now I may have to adjust my grid to compensate for uh, kind of my inspiration uh, imagery. And you can, you can adjust the grid by going again, to, this is where we go to Pages panel. And we're going to do something about this uh, page. So we can go to Layout, and we can go to Margins and Columns, and we can adjust this grid. We can make it more columns. So let's say I'll make it six columns. And I'll turn on the off the preview, click on and off the preview, and that should give me a little bit better, um, should give me a little bit more versatility. The more columns you have, 
the more versatile the uh, layout, the design can be. Okay. So now that I have multiple columns, instead of three, I was six. I'm going to now grab um, my text box with my uh, selection tool, and I can click and drag to the point past the gutter that is part of that second column. Okay. There we go. Now this is this text is not dressed up and ready to do anything with yet. It's it's just a uh, um, plain old copy. What you might want to do uh, off the bat after you get every, you know, all your text in here is go ahead and click and drag over your name and address. And you want to cut that, Command X or Control X on a PC. What that does is it deletes it and it puts it into uh, the memory of the computer. I also got rid of any extra returns that were in there because those are going to be problematic later. Now I'm hitting Control 0 or Command 0 on a Mac, Control 0 on a PC, and I'm zooming out. Again, I'm going back to the selection tool and I'm going to click and drag on this anchor point or this uh, uh, bounding box point and I'm dragging it down to get it out of the way. Now what it did is it cropped the box, it didn't it didn't move the box. If you want to move the box, just click somewhere in the away from one of those points. Now I do have my uh, the name and the addresses uh, in a, those have been copied. So what I want to do is I want to grab what's called the type tool. Now your your menu for your tools may look like this. Well I have to travel a lot farther to get my tools so I click on the double arrow and that's why I have minus two columns. Uh, that's just a preference issue or preference. So I'm clicking on the type tool in the tools box, toolbox and I'm going to click and drag Maybe go all the way across to all the columns. And I'm going to go to Edit and Paste, which is Command V on a PC's Control V, and that's pasting in the uh, stuff that I cut. Okay, so I have that in its own text box. I might even move it off to the side because it's kind of noisy back there. Now, um, now we're ready to maybe play around with the name.